Right. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to another art conversation. It's a beautiful day here, and we are with very talented artists, Judith Madrak. She's very, very talented artist, which her art been displayed nationally and inter internationally all, all over the world. And she's here with us today to share her artwork and her work and her art work with us. Uh, Judith, welcome to our conversation. Oh, thank you so much, Farron. And also, I wanted to say I'm really excited to be here with all of you out there. I'm also just uh, very touched and honored to be asked to participate in the program. And finally, I want to do a shout out to Nawa for all the wonderful things you've been doing for women artists, supporting them for over 100 years. So thank you. Thank you very much for your honor. I'm so excited to have you here today. OK, uh, please um, share with us about yourself and your background, who you are, and how you became interested in art. I would say there, there are a lot of details and we only have half an hour, so I'll just give you the broad brush strokes. Uh, I was born in Washington, D.C., and then we moved around quite a bit, Chicago, Houston, uh, Southern California, New York, and, and also I've settled in New York City now. I have my art practice here for over 20, 25 years. I have a studio in Union Square, which is where I am right now. And um, I think the other big points are that I attended a high school for performing and visual arts in uh, Houston, Texas. I was sort of the fame high school. And it was probably at that point that I, my, my fate as an artist was really solidified uh, and also made manifest. I, I think I also attended, uh, well, also university-wise, I attended the University of Rochester, as well as the San Francisco Art Institute, as well as a couple other schools in there. I was a little restless. And, um, and then finally, again, as I said, I've settled in New York City for the last 20 years. Wow, great. By the way, she has beautiful studio with beautiful view to Union Square. I mean, I haven't been there, but I, I, she um, showed me around when we had our, our talk weeks weeks ago <laughs> yes one of the little a little anecdote about my studio is that isabel bishop who was an honorary member of nawa was supposed to have had a studio in this building and the building was erected in the 1920s uh, the klein family of the klein department store fame uh, there were artists in the family and so initially the entire building was filled with artist studios and every studio that's on the 12th floor which is where i am has northern facing skylight wow. so hence all the light in here which is marvelous Oh, how lucky you are, Judith. <laughs> All right, so tell us what type of art you most known for? What type of art am I most known for? Yeah, or or identify with, yes. Well, I would say that my, my body of work encompasses both public art, so um, public art installations, permanent public art installations that are at, some of them are site specific installations and we have quite a few of them in the overview material, which we can share with people. There's um, uh, one very important stream of work to me and consideration is, is creating these participatory artworks where the audience really co-authors the piece. So there's this amazingly liberating feeling as an artist where you're asking, you're collaborating with this much larger uh, world um, to engage with your work, but also not only that, but to really, the, uh, the artist as the conduit for the realization of the completed piece. So what we're looking at right now, our memories is one of those projects. And okay. since, since you start with uh, about your public art, let's start with public art, okay? And then let's see, and then explain to us uh, what this um, like installation uh, in Central sure. World, I believe, right? 
and, right. uh, and and I think that is a good point too is that this the studio the sculptures you saw in the studio are are more intense contemplations of particular emotions or conditions or and um, thoughts um, and and also really things that I'm I'm very intrigued by or curious about and we'll talk about that later on. Um, so I would say that the body, the public artwork is really composed of both site specific installations that are informed by the natural environment in which they, they manifest and arise. And then there are also these participatory artworks like our memories and our memories was part of the, the New York City Parks Art in the Parks program. This uh, just fantastic and amazing program uh, with I cannot speak highly enough about in New York City. And again, much like NAWA, they support artists in the city, um, alternative venues and opening up the parks so that you really have an open air museum where people can come and engage and it's not your it's not the typical audience that you would necessarily find in in a museum or an art gallery uh, although it's those those people as well um, so with our memories the idea was to create a collective memory that would really kind of bind us together and bind us to our humanity and what i wanted to do was um, break down those barriers around First of all, audience and artists, right? Because we're co-authoring this piece. Secondly, around memory formation in the brain, which is a big area of interest for me. How we um, how we actually process experiences, how we store them, how memories are encoded, how they're retrieved. So things like short-term memory, long-term memory, autobiographical memory, compromised memory, all functions of memory. Um, and I do have a piece or two in the studio specifically about memory, so we can look at those later. Um, in any case, for our memories, the thought was that um, I would create these vessels, these larger vessels or urns, sculptural urns, and then people would recall a powerful memory or formative event from their lives, and they would classify it into one of six primary emotive categories. And those categories are based on Pluchik and a bunch of other uh, psychiatrists and psychologists, and so these these primary emotions were based on love and anger, fear, joy, sadness, and surprise. So um, obviously, these are these are feelings that we all have. Uh, we, you know, life is composed, and I would say, you know, especially during the times that we're in right now, I have some very dark moments and distressing times. And so the the idea was that you would not, you know, you wouldn't isolate and only have happy memories, it would be whatever you wanted to share. And as you can see, um, the sculptures really came to life as people shared more and more uh, their experiences. Well, uh, so what was those pieces made for? They're, 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 they're acrylic stones. Okay. They're ac acrylic colored stones. Okay. And, and which color uh, related to one of those memories? Or that, the to memories? the uh, the colors are related to the emotive categories. So uh, I, have a, I have a short video. I mean, uh, would be good if I can. Oh, uh, that would be great. Yeah, okay. play that a uh, few minutes okay. of that, of that um, video and then everyone can see. And then if you <laughs> want, you can um, explain, but also they have some good thing in this video at that university. Sure. Know, and I would just like to do a shout out. The director for this is Jake Alexander McAfee, extraordinarily talented film director. And the producer on it was Mark Lobin, an incredibly talented actor, producer, who also happens to be my husband. So <laughs> I think he's watching right now or some. <laughs> Uh, let's see some of the memory and uh, like you know people. Well, shall we? Are you, are you going to run the film a little bit? Yes, yeah, yeah, little bit, yes, yes. Uh, everyone that wanders through an opera town show. 
Hi, my name's Cavell. I'm from Louisiana. I chose the Storm of Joy because I've been going through a lot of anxiety and depression and like just looking at the nature and like my will to live and just like all the things around me and like what makes me happy. It's just like it helped me through a lot. My family and my friends and my theater group has um, helped me find some joy in my life and traveling, of course. So that's why I picked Joy. My name is Leah Mae McMorn. I was married to my husband for almost 63 years. He was my darling and I was his darling for all those years. I've always loved romance, love, and love, love, love was my thing. Definitely. Love. Love it. Love. It's so sweet. So what does this installation represent to you? Well, I remember this is part of an evolving series of sculptures that analyze and reflect on the mechanism of memory. When I was thinking of creating an audience participatory interactive piece, I wanted to do something that would activate the memory function, but also collectively and physiologically create a memory for all the people that were engaged with it. The idea for it is to create collective memorial pieces that contain memories and experiences from people all over the world. My name's Jen and I chose fear because I think going to college I was very afraid but life's about overcoming your fears so. I'm Colin and I picked the Storm Joy. Uh, we've been together for 10 years this year and the storm represents how I feel every day. <laughs> Yeah. So, so where do you think your work is going? Well, after this installation is central. Park, and this is probably a good place where we can um, talk a little. One thing I wanted to do, uh, another shout out for were some dear supporters and friends and have, have come travel distances to come to different installations of our memories, including the two mother-daughter teams that were interviewed. And, you know, I find that so touching as well. Like there, there's a continuity here of people and dear, you know, dear friends and, and people, what, unknown people who travel to see those, What to do with those pieces at the end? So the, at the end, the idea for our memories had been that continue to have new iterations in different cities and different countries and then ultimately all the sculptures will gather in a, in a sculpture park and you know as often happens with artists I have sent also am involved in other new projects and evolving works so our memories is still one stream although it's not the primary stream right now um, of focus. So I would say that I still visualize that for our memories eventually. At present, there are seven memory sculptures that have been filled. Um, and just like as a, a little factoid, one sculpture comprises about 1500 memory stones. So if you can imagine that, that would be all those people that have wandered through Central Park or Thomas Paine Park or Governor's Island, which was where it was first premiered as part of the, uh, the amazing Governor's Island Art Fair. So that's where I really piloted the idea and tested it out and moved along. And no, also, what, 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 what material do you see? This? Sorry. Yeah, that's the pieces. And yeah, this is one of the memory stones. So okay. each, each one, like for example, that yellow or orange was joy, right? Right. Okay. And love was clear, yeah. anger was red, sadness was blue, surprise was purple, and fear was green. Yeah. And those were actually color coded to Clute Chip's color wheel. Yeah. Love, I took some liberty with and made it clear because I thought it could encapsulate all of us. Um, and, you know, I, another aspect of the project in, of cartographies, which is what you're looking at right now, is that these projects, in many respects, um, <laughs> are, impact me even more during our, our COVID world that we live in, because 
it really brings like great sadness to me and everyone else that we can't engage, but you know, we're isolated to do a project like our memories or cartographies is not, wouldn't even be viable right now or responsible for me to do that. Um, and so I cherish these projects. They're, they're, you know, they're, I don't want to say they're relics because this period that we're in of uncertainty and, um, you know, tumult will hopefully resolve itself um, before too long with vaccines and so on. So hopefully that, that's the temporary pause. Although what is really germane is that projects like cartographies, which required participants to put on EEG devices to measure their brain waves, that is not at all viable or possible now. So these projects that were very interactive uh, in nature and really involve the audience in that capacity to co-author it and develop it with me, those will need to be reimagined in some other form. I mean, much the way that we're reimagining this dialogue here, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so how, which is in fact, I mean, an interesting question to me about how does art evolve and how does it evolve? I mean, regardless of when there's a vaccine, all of our lives have been changed. And what are those changes? And what do they look like, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, great. Uh, so would you tell us about like, you know, uh, so what you're doing today since you were talking about like, you know, social <laughs> all this, before we go back to your other um, public um, art, um, tell us what you're doing today you know, in this isolation and you're sitting in your studio or, or your home and you can be engaged publicly. So are you, um, um, do you have any project working? Um, what type of artwork are you doing today? Yeah, so I'm, as many artists, a number of my projects were rescheduled. Uh, a couple projects were canceled. I, I am working on uh, hopefully one public art project which will, is moving forward and um, that's an evolution of fluid pathways which is another one of the public art pieces that was a um, site-specific and referential work that I did in Murcia, Spain as part of AADK, another amazing program. And so I'm plugging all these programs, but they are. And, and actually, as just a side note, I feel very fortunate to have been participate, you know, to participate in these programs, to be part of those communities. And um, especially now, we you know derive our sustenance from those experiences and those communities. So, you know, really critical. Um, so do we want to share uh, I mean, uh, you, uh, I tell what, like, you know, uh, you said this is the piece you have behind you is one of the yes. ones you're working today. So this is the piece behind me that was um, also a photograph. Oh, you know what, I didn't know if I have a, let me just see one moment. I think I have a, the photograph of the play, but this piece is called Growth. And the idea for the piece, and I started the piece, it's been a long, a long time coming this week. <laughs> it started in September and it's a very large piece because it consists of a parent, which is the form that you see behind me. And then there's a child, which is over to my other, um, to my right. And the idea for the piece, was again uh, based on my interest in brain cells, neurons, dendrites, and also based on my interest in um, what does it, so in a motive, like really I try, a lot of my work is about almost an x-ray of our insides, you know? So what do our insides look like? Both from just a cellular histology, anatomical perspective, and also, though, what do they look like from an emotional, you know, informative perspective, right? Because those are two 
very different things, although they're both, but to me, equally compelling and fascinating. But so this particular piece has elements of the neurons um, and dendrites, the arms that come off of the neurons' main body. And they're actually like antenna that receive the electrical impulses. Mm -hmm. and, and the smaller form, though, is a childlike form. And that form is really, you know, hence the title growth, is about like, what does it feel like when you separate from a main body, whether it's a cell body, whether it's something like, you know, a fetus, and what, what does it feel like when it comes apart? And, you know, does it, um, what, you know, there's a, a tendency to want to grow, but then there's also a tendency to want to cling. So, which you all will see in the final piece. And also, let me see if I, uh, this is one of my big interests now are fossils, just so you know, that was another thing you had asked me about. Trilobites, branchiopods, and ammonites, things that have been around for hundreds of millions of years. Um, and also just thinking through like, what does that say about us? You know, what, what do we leave in terms of the fossil record? What are we leaving and what are we responsible for? Um, but anyway, here's a, here's a photograph of the clay. I don't know if the audience can see this. And I, I also used it on the post that I shared. So about you cast it in clay and then- Yeah, um, so what happened, of, everything what is- material and cast would be? So the clay aspect to it, I mean, before we even get to clay, it starts out as an, a wire, well, even before the wire, it starts out as a sketch, just okay. rough sketch, like the sketches you see. And then what really happens is it forms in my brain. So even with growth, I had a pretty clear idea of how I wanted it to be. And then what happens is I use the wire armature and then I start forming the the internal skeleton for the piece and the skeleton really becomes very much like you know like our skeletons you know it's very much a skeleton that is uh, representative of the way the final piece will look and then I put on the the muscles and the flesh and the tendons and all that and then with this particular piece which is another thing I'm very excited about I, I'm creating my own histology. So meaning I'm creating my own cellular patterns. And I don't know if the audience can really see this so much, but you'll see it when it's fully, it's work in progress. It's, it's I'd say maybe 75% complete. Mm -hmm. um, what I wanted to do though, was I wanted to evoke cells, connective tissue, and also wood. So there are many components that look like bark or wood tone, but I wanted it to be integrated into something that is really my own histology. And <laughs> that was something you and I talked about, Farron, that these patterns and motifs are recurring for, for decades at this point, like interest in anatomy, interest in bone, interest in marrow, interest in cells, interest also interest in exposing things like um personal mythologies larger mythologies um and in uh, and and i think that's, in, that's you, sorry, go ahead. in your statement you said you're creating bridge you're trying to create a bridge between art and science so that's what your artwork are about creating this bridge between art and science uh, absolutely yeah. Well, uh, and since we, we're running out of time, you know, and then uh, Judith, you have to promise me to give us another time because so many things to talk and we have only like, you know, I think five more minutes or three more minutes. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> so I, want to also, I want to show another side of you, which is, that's not only what you do. So you do a lot of other different type of artwork. And then also one of some of your early work, which is we didn't get chance to talk about your, your if your work change over the time and you know how they change overally. And I have actually few of your work in 90 and it would be good if you just point to some of them 
and like, you know, explain how relevant your then and now work are. And um, I th yeah, absolutely, Farhan. I think that there's a lot of continuity from the early work. These are, all these pieces are from the 90s. And the first one is called Dionysius. And uh, that was when I was really um, exploring a more of a collective archetypal mythology. So the story about Zeus, you know, putting the baby, the fetus in his thigh, and that's the thigh. More literal, although, um, the, yeah, actually, if you talk, go back to the first slide, the judges, which is the panel all the way on the left, is about four feet by three feet. And the, these are plaster cast. So one area of continuity from a materials perspective is my love of plaster. Um, and I really, this was at the, the San Francisco Art Institute. I really came into plaster cast as a medium at that stage. So that's clearly a thread running through all of my work, as you can see, and in the studio to this day, I love, love, love plaster cast. And I love the way plaster, plaster right? It's still yeah. the, the major material. Uh, of exactly, the, yeah. Right. And, you know, plaster comes from gypsum and limestone. So plaster is also a naturally occurring organic and mineral and stone. And so that also resonates very strongly with me. And especially, I know we're running out of time, but really quickly, one, one big emphasis in my work at this point is doing things that have more of an environmental connection. So whether that's about climate change or our responsibility or accountability, like ownership and awareness of, of the planet that we inhabit. And um, a reciprocity between our relationship and what we owe that planet. You know, we're, it's not a one way, one directional conversation. We're all integrated with one another and interconnected. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, that's absolutely true. So you, you do, like, all your figures work are also kind of science fiction type of work. And uh, it reminds me of, like, you know, all those science fiction movies. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, like, you know, I absolutely like to talk about them, like, in another conversation, hopefully soon. But by then, I think your work progress, that growth one, going to be, like, you know, hopefully finished and we can see it more. Oh, I would love that. I would love that. Yeah, I mean, I think I would say that there um they're kind of, I understand what you say, it's science, science fiction in that they're of this world, but they're not quite at this world, you know? And um, they're, to me, they're the earlier pieces and standing, not ancestors so much, but the work before this, um, if you go back, like, uh, where are some more of the figures? So some of these actually, to me, this would be uh, a representation in an organic biomorphic form of a family. That's why it's called family of memories. It's about memory formation. There's the Madonna figure. She's cradling the baby figures. And to me, like family of memory is one side of the figures that are representing and reflecting the facade but they're not there it's it's sort of everything integrated together is what we are composite right so uh, uh do are we, we out of time <laughs> <laughs> yeah time flies do you have any last word um for um our guest today and uh, then uh, we're gonna uh, come back and uh, well, Farron, I just want to thank you again and this and thank everyone who's been participating and sharing this with us. And I was really excited about today and having you in my studio. And it's the first time I've had anyone in the studio in months and it feels <laughs> really good. <laughs> Really good. I mean, I'm sorry we don't have much time. I would love to walk yeah. around. Yeah. Next time. Next time. But she has a website and she has a lot of amazing of her artwork in the website. Uh, you can check out um, her website and I believe you can reach out to her through her website as well as judithmadrak.com. And um, yeah, so this is like the end of our conversation today, but I promise you she's going to come back. <laughs> and have another conversation with us because so many things we didn't share. 
And um, thank you very much, Judith. We really appreciate your time and uh, your work. You are amazing. And um, uh, thank you for sharing with us. Thank and you so much. <laughs> Uh, okay, so see you next Friday with another talented artist. Thank you very much. Stay safe and strong. Love you all. Thank you. Bye, Judy. Thank you.